this is all new to me, but uh, I'm not trying to be eloquent. I just want as many people as possible to understand the importance of obeying God. One reason for me to make this video is to let people know what Hebrews 10.31 says, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hand of the living God. And I didn't understand the gravity of that statement until January of 1986. I'm sure if you've read the Bible, many of you heard the expression or read the expression being turned over to Satan so that you would learn not to blaspheme. It's what Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 1.20. Well, that's what happened to me, and I'm going to tell you, the, it, it, there's no way to explain the feeling of that. There's no way to explain the depression and the weakness and the fear and everything that's associated with that. Once God pulls his spirit away from us, there's no, there's no more smiling, there's no happiness, there's no joy, there's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing. It's just an emptiness and a darkness, and it's just like you're falling into an abyss, and there's no end in sight. Well, I received that because of my pride. I didn't understand at where the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17 that we are the temple of God, and anybody, def anybody defiles the temple of God, him will God destroy and I thank God he didn't destroy me. He allowed me to come back. He allowed me the opportunity again to have the joy and the peace that I know from him. But I've learned a new method of studying and reading the Bible and praying. I found out that God has got to be first in our life because he doesn't play second fiddle to anyone. And I didn't know that First John 1, uh, 1 John 2, 4 says, if you say you know him and you keep not his commandments, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And Luke 31, 20, or 21, 36 says, pray always that we might be accounted worthy to escape these things that's coming up on earth to try them. And we are going to be, that time is going to come. Jesus is going to rapture his church and those left behind. Now I know he said, I'll raise them up in the last day, but the last day will actually be after the rapture of the church. Jesus made it clear when he said, when he told in uh, Matthew that except your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case inherit the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 5.20. Jesus is coming back after a church that is perfect. He's coming back after a people that are trying. We are the body of Christ. I know there's preachers that say we can live any way we want to live, but that's a lie. That's, that's one of Satan's biggest lies. That's, this is the doctrine that Paul told Timothy would happen in last days that many would not endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap to themselves preachers having itching ears. We are living in that time. Whenever I would go to lay down at night, and when this first happened to me, I had just got done playing a gospel saying I was a, gospel, a guitar player for a gospel group, and we had done an all-night sing at an auditorium and I came home and I noticed days before that my mind started, I started getting like I was getting lightheaded and I quit drinking coffee and quit eating sugar. I'd done anything that I thought may bring, bring me down. And this is how Satan attacks. He attacks by first destroying your ability to comprehend. Once he does that, then there's no way that you can do anything about it. I understand that people say, well, you can pray. And I didn't read my Bible. I was taking college classes at the time. And I went right back to studying the, the Bible or the, the books. I, I ignored the Bible. And I found out later that try, Satan's tried to do it to me again. And I found out later, that, years after that, even, even, even up to five or six years after that happened, this has been over 20 years since I've been freed. But Satan still will come and he will try. He knows that I know him. He, he tells other people he doesn't exist. He tells other people that it's a figment in your imagination. Everybody wants to believe in God, but nobody wants to believe the devil exists. Well, you can't believe in God if you don't believe in the Bible. And if you don't believe in the Bible, then you know, you know that uh, there's, no, there, there's no point in me even talking to you because without God's word, we have nothing. God gives us the opportunity to serve him with a pure heart. He said in John, he said, 
as many as come to him, he, he gave them the ability to become the sons of God. But we have got to use that ability God gave us. In Luke, or in Matthew uh, uh, 25, 31, Jesus starts out when, it, when, when the Son of Man comes, he's going to set the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And the ones on the right, he's going to call in. And on the left, he's going to, he's going to send in, the, the Bible says, a place to prepare for the devil and his angels. But what's he say it takes to make it on the right? Those that have visited the sick, those that were in prison and you visited, those that you sat with whenever they were ill, those that you fed when they were hungry, you clothed when they were naked. I know people says that all, I hear preachers or people all the time talking about these people on YouTube of, uh, preachers that that prosperity preachers and they've got millions of dollars you know and don't them people shouldn't even be brought up these are people that worship money they have nothing to do with God only God's people takes care of the poor there is no way that you would claim to be a, a lover of God the Bible says if you don't take care of the needs of family how does the love of God dwell in you it's not in them so I, I don't bring up their names because they're unimportant. What is important is those that want to know God and serve God have got to understand that it is in our, our willingness to seek his word, to seek him and find out his will for our life. God called me to be an evangelist. I decided to give that up and go to become a business administrator. You don't walk out on God. His gifts and our callings are without repentance. You don't repent to get them, and you don't get rid of them by repenting. God called every one of us to do a job. He called every one of us to do something for him, and if we don't seek him to understand what that is, then we may find ourselves on the other side of the rapture and not willing, not even understanding what happened to us. God is coming back after a church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. The church of Laodicea is, is, is actually a replica of today's church. If you look at it in Matthew uh, chapter 3, or uh, Revelation chapter 3, that he said, because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. He's not coming back after a half church. He's not coming back after a weak church. He's coming back after a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Believe me, no drunkard, no adulteress, no pedophile, no one has this stuff in their life that doesn't repent for them and get forgiveness and turn their life around are, are not going to go into rapture. That is just simply not, it, it's not going to happen. He tells us in Corinthians that, that I told you not to keep company with, an, with a, a person that's a fornicator, but he said, I have to explain it to you better that a person that calls himself a brother be a fornicator or adulterous or a, any, anything that, that's un, uh, that's unsound in doctrine, he said they are not going to make it to heaven. We have got to go back. Jesus, the Bible, and God has never changed. It is the same yesterday, the day, and forever. What Jesus expected out of his disciples in Paul's day, he expects out of us today. And anyone who are not living according to that, like I said, he says in 2136 of Luke, ex that to watch and pray always that you might be accounted worthy. This is Jesus' word, believe me. What he means, he says, except ye become as a little child, you will not in enter the kingdom of heaven. If you have millions of dollars stocked up, your money is going to testify against you. So there's people that's claiming to be Christians or preachers that are prosperity preachers. Uh, you should never bring them up because they're no different than anybody else in Hollywood. If they are worshiping money, they will be judged accordingly. But it, don't let that stand between your walk with Christ. What we need to do is concentrate on obeying God and doing what he told us to do. Whenever I was going through all those wicked times with Satan and not understanding that well, what happened to me, I even I took off to Florida because I and lived in a car with my wife and kid and I because I couldn't under, I, I thought maybe it was clinical depression. I didn't know what happened to me. While I was there, I was out in the field working and I looked across the fence and I saw a unicorn and I thought, my land, I'm really going crazy now. And I, as I, I went, the next day I caught a man out there with the unicorn. So I went over and asked him, I said, what is that thing? And he told me it's a unicorn. I said, well, the Barnum and Bailey Brothers Circus has one of these. And I heard they were getting sued over it. And he said, this is the one. I raised it from a baby and it, nobody has no implant. It just come out with a little nub on his but then I realized what Job said, what God said to Job about him being able to 
to control the unicorn. And I thought, you know, well, maybe, maybe now I'm going to get cured because I've, I've witnessed the unicorn and God's got the point across, but it didn't end there. It went several years after that. And I'll tell you, whenever you're turned over to Satan, you don't lay down and go to sleep. There is no drugs. There's nothing that can help you. You lay down. And as soon as you doze off, you'll be falling off of a cliff out of an airplane or a, uh, you'll be trapped on a railroad track and a train coming. This went on for years, night after night. And it wasn't until one day I thought I was having a heart attack because I kept feeling chest pains and I, I got down and I prayed and I prayed. I could hear Satan saying, I'm going to kill you. And he, he kept telling me that he was going to kill me. And I thought, you know, I have got to get in touch with God. I can't, I can't take a chance on dying in this shape. And I, I prayed for, I, I don't know how long I prayed but God sent an angel and he delivered me and he told me, he said, I was with you all the way through this. You know, this has been over 20 years and I haven't told really many people about it. I know it sounds kind of crazy to people that don't, don't know God or don't understand his word or, and, and even I didn't understand that because I didn't even understand God the way I thought as I do now. I, I study now. I, with with a concern. I have a real deep concern to know the truth. And when he sent me that angel, I felt good. I was delivered. And then after I, when I laid down, after I laid down and, and um, I, everything got real dark, real black, darker than what the room originally was with the lights out. And it was a deep darkness you could feel. And, and when I turned over, Satan was standing there and I felt like a something sh sharp pierced me through the back of my heart and it was coming out and I went to wake my wife up to pray for me and that angel was still there and he said, you do it. That to this day is what keeps me realizing beyond any shadow of a doubt that angel was there because when I rebuked that devil, that pain left me when I literally thought I was dying. And I was demon possessed. I mean, Satan had full control of my life. But God always kept me from, from doing anything real stupid. And you, you got to understand the love of God. And I now I do understand a whole lot more about the love of God because He, he loved me whenever I thought I would never, ever see peace again. It was like I was living on the outside and, and looking in through a glass wall. I could see other people and they could laugh and they could do everything. I thought they can go anywhere. They can have joy. They can do anything they want to, but I can't. I'm stuck in this hole. I'm stuck in a depression that is so... I, I, there's no way I can explain it, except uh, the only thing I could come close to would be like being buried out in the wilderness in a coffin with animals dry, digging, trying to get through the through the coffin at me. That was the only thing I could refer, uh, relate it to because I was in so much pain and so fearful that I thought I would never be able to come out of this. So don't let anybody tell you that you can live any way you want to. Believe me. God said that those that, that do wrong, they will suffer for the wrong that they do. And like I said, he... He said that except our righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, we will in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. And even though God loves everyone that goes to hell, nothing can separate us from the love of God. He loves everybody that goes into hell because God is love. But believe me, because he is love, he tells the truth. And he's coming back after a church, like I said, without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. He said, those that overcome the sin of this world, I will not blot your name out of the book of life. So don't think for a second that he can't blot your name out of the book of life. Like I said, some he's going to raise up after the rapture. The Bible tells you in Revelation that there will be people here, who those that will worship him, the Bible says, whose names are not written in the book of life. So there's going to be people here walking with, we're during the time the Antichrist is here. They're going to be here not realizing why, why they're here at the beginning, but they're going to hold on because they're going to say, God warned me about this. But who wants to be here during that time that have to literally die for the name of Christ because you will have to be beheaded. 
Well, I want to thank you all for listening to me, and I hope I hope this touches someone's heart, and I hope really you understand that God is coming back after a perfect church. As he said, be thou perfect, even as the Father which is in heaven is perfect. We don't have to give in to lust. We don't, I don't look at women and lust after them. I don't look at things and lust. I don't have to. I do that when I turn my mind away from God. People say you're only human. No, you are not only human. If you're a child of God, you're a peculiar person. You have the mind of Christ, and you're not ignorant to Satan's devices, as Paul said. We have got to learn to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, to obey him, and do what he says. Thank you.